Hallelujah. The topic we'll be taking today says becoming a friend of God. Becoming a friend of God. I, I want to believe we are all saved. We know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. But we need to move from the level of just having Jesus as our Lord and Savior to the point in which we know him as friend. Many of us, when they ask you what do you what is the mind of God for us, we don't know. And that is the reason why we see many people going about today. They want to hear what God is saying. They want to manifest power. They want to live in a supernatural level. But you cannot do that without becoming a friend of God. Many of us now, in most African nations, as an unemployed youth, the first thing you, you want or you desire is, do I know somebody working in that establishment? Even if it's a friend of a friend, if it's a relative, if it's a cousin, brother, sister, uncle, or somebody, you want to get connection to that person. What if they are sitting and somebody says, oh, he's my friend. I speak to him every time. I'm sure you get excited. This can you connect me. And that is what is driving many people today. You see many people looking for one way or the other. And they are saying, ah, prophet, professor, man of God, professor. What do they want? They want to know the heart of God. But Jesus came to tear the veil that covered the holies of holies so that we can go to God ourselves to know his heart. But many of us don't know the heart of God truly. Why? Because we are too far from him. Even when we're speaking, we don't know what to say. I remember years ago, there was a friend of mine that called me, and she was trying to disguise her voice on the phone. And by the time she spoke one or two words, I just called her name. And she was like, ah, do you get my name? Let's find the disguise. Because let's find the fact that she's disguising her voice, I have been dated with her closely for years. Many of us, we are asking the Lord to speak for, to us. Even when he is speaking, we cannot understand. Why? Because we only go to him when we need something. Many of us are using God. We have told God to ATM. Sometimes we don't even carry our ATM card around. But the day you need it, you will look for it. Is that not true? So many of us have told God to ATM. We only go to him when we need him. I pray the Lord we help us in Jesus' name. Who is a friend? Somebody that is attached to you. Somebody you have a close relationship with. Somebody that you favor. Somebody that you respect. Someone that you have affection for. Many of us today did not start as friends. Many of us today started as strangers. Many of us today have started as schoolmates, classmates, colleagues. And then today, some of us are friends. Why we are not friends with other people? And because we are friends with each other, there are some benefits, there are some things we know about each other that others do not know. Amen. So it is very, very important for us to become a friend of God, not just an acquaintance of God. When you are a friend with somebody, the, person, the friendship is not one way. Some people will come down and say, Ah, I'm a pastor, it's my uncle, I know him. Every, every month we have meetings. And then they tell you, okay, call Ramaphosa. We want to meet him. And then they start saying, ah, no, 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 I can't call him on phone, you know, because of all these things. I can't even send the message. It's a lie. Or if they, they are opportune to meet him, and they say, ah, you know, you know, I know you. It's not about you knowing him, it's about him knowing you also. So many of us are very good to sing the song. I am a friend of God. And God is saying, I don't know this one. Uh, in Nigeria, I don't know if it happens here too. There are parties that they give ID, invites, especially by invites. And then you get to the door, and they say, Where is your invite? You say, ah, I don't need invites. I am a friend of the celebrant. We didn't allow you in. But there are times, maybe truly you forgot your invite, and the celebrant is passing by. Two things can happen. Is it that you call the celebrant by name, and the celebrant looks at you and says, or the same person, oh, it's you, come, 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 come in. Even though you don't have an invite, what happened? You automatically do what? You are allowed in. Many of us keep saying, I am a friend of God. I have a relationship with God. The question today is that, does God really know you as a friend? It's not about you shouting and carrying the title. It's not about you displaying. No, the, the thing is that, does God really know you? Can God call you friend? I pray the Lord 
call the apostle in Jesus' name. A friend is someone that comes to your mind many times in the day. Do you, do you agree with me? If you truly call someone your friend, you just find out that out of the blue, you start thinking of the person. Maybe something happens, and then you just thought, oh, if this thing happens, when this person is there, this will be our response. This will be his response. And then, that's why the fact that the person is not there, you find yourself smiling. And somebody is telling you, well, what's making you smile? So, I just remembered something. That is a friend. Amen. The person you want to talk to first thing in the morning and last thing at night. So if you say Jesus is your friend or you want to become a friend of Jesus and you want to talk to him once a week, once a month, or you want to talk to him when you need something, are you sure he's your friend? If I have a friend and the only person, the person only calls me when they need my help, maybe professional help or financial help, I personally will not see that person as a friend. I will see that person as somebody that is using me. So do you really have a relationship with God? Many of us, the relationship between men and women. You cannot say you love a woman or you love a man and you very speak to the person. Some people will say, I'm very busy. My day is very busy. See, no matter how busy you are, you will find time to speak to the one you love. Except they see your phone. No matter how People say you make time for people that matters to you. So if you say you are too busy for God, we need to ask yourself, where is truly your allegiance? Because when you say you love someone, if someone says I love you, and the person really calls me, and maybe we say we are in a relationship for six months, I can count the number of times you've called me on my end. You only call me once in two weeks, once in three weeks, and you now ask me, when are we going to get married? I will, I will ask you, are you sure we are ready to get married? Because the closeness cannot be there without talking. So when you don't talk constantly with God, our friendship with Him is in doubt. Amen. A friend is the person you are eager to share your joy and your sadness with. When you are happy, you are always eager to share it with them. When you are sad, you are eager to share it with them. I was listening to the story of um, Ellie Paul, few weeks back, and she said there was a time that um, one of her drivers said um, a mockery statement to her. Ah, this woman, when are you going to get a better car? A driver that she's paying is telling her, you need to get a better car in a mockery way. So she said after they left that day, she got back to the room. And then she took the phone and just called the husband. And as the husband took, she was just crying. Ooh, 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 ooh. And she was crying. And I said, okay, where are you? I'm coming now. Just wait in the hotel room. I'll come and meet you. A friend is somebody you are not afraid to be vulnerable with. A friend knows your weakness and your strength. The same way with God. But you know the funny thing? Many of us, we know God knows. But we are still falling for God. We are still trying to deceive God. Anyone that you cannot open your nakedness for, and not literally nakedness, I mean that cannot know your secret, is not a friend. A friend will know the weak point that you have. And you are not afraid to show it to them. And that is who God should be with you. God should be somebody you can go to and say, God, I'm feeling this way. Even when other people cannot understand the way I'm feeling, this is exactly how I feel it. And you give it to me because you know he understands you. He got you. Like this time they say. A friend should be somebody that got you. Even when you are looking at the person's face, there should be somebody that understands what you're saying. Amen. A friend is somebody you go out of your way to make happy. Or you are always, you want them to always be in good times with you. You don't, you don't cherish a friendship. When there's a misunderstanding and you say, I don't care about you, I'm not your friend again. It's only children that say that. I remember many times I had to tell my, my children, you don't have a choice, you have to be friends with your siblings. As soon as they are fighting, they tell, you are not my friend, you are not my friend. Uh -uh. I say, you have to be friends with each other. Many of us, as soon as we go through some trials and temptation, like Psalm 23, when I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, we tell God, God, I'm not your friend again. But when things are going on well, when God is blessing us, we come and say, I am a friend of God. But when we have challenges, we have things that are not good, we say, God, I'm not your friend again. The friendship is God. When you want
God. Situations like that don't break your friendship easily. Amen. When you are friends with someone, you love what they love and hate what they eat. There are some friends you have that there are things that you love, they don't love. Some people don't love onions. And you have somebody that loves onions and the person is coming to visit you. Even though you love onions, what will you do? You will cook that thing without onions or look for a way to blend the onion so that they will not see it. You love what they love. You hate what they hate. You love what God loves. You hate what he hates. If you are truly eager to become his friend. And they always desire their companionship. You desire the companionship when you want to become a friend of God. You don't allow anything to stop you from having communication with him. From having a relationship with him. There are three important components of friendship. Three important components of friendship. The first one says association. You can have friends by association. Just because we are in church now. We, there's a level of friendship among many of us by association. Another one is by loyalty. So it's a level of friends. Initially, you, you associate your acquaintance, you meet with each other as strangers. Then from there, because of your close rapport with each other, you become you begin to develop a sense of loyalty to the person. I don't know if it has happened to some of us that have been to school before. Maybe when you go to the school, this person is a stranger to you, and then maybe you sat down for the first time. They give you an assignment, the person is not in class. But because you develop a kind of association, what do you do? You become loyal to the person and let him or her know there is an assignment we need to submit. That is loyalty going beyond association. And the last one says affection. So we have association, we have loyalty, we have affection. The same way when we come to God. Many of us come to God as a form of association. I associate with God. He's my Father. He's my Savior. And then, because you continue to have a relationship with Him, you continue to understand the depth of His love for you, what happens? You have this level of loyalty for God. And then the last one that God is calling us to is what? Is a level of love and affection for Him, in which you are able to have a close relationship with the Lord. And these three components also determine the level of friendship. So friendship are only association. When you see, you see. When you don't see, you don't see. You might not see each other in two years and you don't call each other. But when you see each other, maybe you mistake each other yourself at a party. a 
and sure many of us know it. He says, no longer do I call you servant, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you what? Friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. I don't call you servant again. I don't call you associate again. I don't call you acquaintance again. I call you my friend because I have shown you the way of the father. Amen. God has called us to be his friend. But can we measure up to become his friend truly? Can we measure up? Because there are terms and conditions we need to fulfill. I can say I want you to be my friend. But it depends on if you truly want to be my friend. If I say I want you to be my friend and I tell you my do's and don'ts and you intentionally do what I don't like continuously, continuously, continuously. What is telling me is that you are not interested in a friendship with me. So we need to ask ourselves, are we truly ready to become a friend of God or we just like to say it by mouth? There are expectations for us if we want to become friends with God. There is a standard for friendship. The Bible says the standard of the Lord standing short and as the same. Let me know that men by the name of God do what? Depart from iniquity. So if you say you love God, if you say you want to become his friend, then you need to depart from iniquity because that tells us that you truly want to be the friend of God. Not everyone can become a friend of God. And it's not because God does not want to be your friend. But it's because you don't want to be his friend. The friendship of God is open to the whole world. But not everyone will become his friend. Because not everyone wants to walk in his way and his rule. Amen. Not everyone can ascend the level and take of intimacy with God that will qualify them to be called his friend. During the course of the week, somebody was telling me, uh, I want to, myself and my husband wants to come and visit you in your house. And I looked at this person, I don't know you to the point of taking you to my house. I don't know you to the point of letting you know some things about myself. The same way it is with God. Does God trust us enough to allow us to know some things about Him? To allow us to see the hidden and the mysteries that pertain to Him? Are you Abraham or Lot? Who are you? Lot knows God. Do we agree with me? Lot knows God. Abraham knows God. But do they have the same closeness with, with God? No. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, from verse 17. And it's a very, very important passage because God, the Almighty God, said, Shall I hide from, shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. God wanted to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and then he's passing by and saying to himself, Shall I hide from Abraham what I want to do? How many of us are in that closeness with God? That when God wants to do something in your vicinity, in your family, he will say, Shall I hide from Brother Tinash? Shall I hide from Brother Frank what I want to do? Have we gotten to that level of closeness with him that is able to open up to us what he said to do in and around us? Lord, that his country was even going to be destroyed, was not
God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 41 verse 8. Isaiah 41 verse 8. If, if you are there, you can project it next thing. It says, But you, Israel, are my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendant of Abraham, my friend. So not only is it that Abraham that is going around and saying, God is my friend, God is my friend. God testified to the point that Abraham is my friend. Can God call you his friend? Can God look down and say, oh, I see, this person is my friend. And for us to see what are the things that we can do to become a friend of God, we see that in Psalm 24. The standard God requires from us for his friendship and intimacy. And I would like to tell us that there is no way you can attain the level of closeness with God that you desire to become his friend. If you want to read your Bible every Sunday, in Nigeria, when we were growing up, there was a medication they used to give us every Sunday for malaria, malaria prophylaxis. They call it Sunday, Sunday medicine. Some of us have made our Bible. Not our daily bread. It's Sunday, Sunday medicine. That is even if we remember when the Bible is on Sunday morning. We only have our Bible on Sunday. During the week, we don't know where the Bible is. How many of us can eat once a week? Just once a week. Come on, you cannot fast once a week. And just eat once a week. Even when we are fasting now, before we pray by 6 a.m., some of us are like vegetables that we put in hot water. Amen. We are so tired. So, what if I say let's do it once a week? But you want your spirit man to be strong. How can you have two dogs? You feed one twice a day or three times a day, and you feed one once a week. If they are asked to fight, who is going to win? The one you feed every day. Now you are wondering, why am I falling into temptation? Why am I committing sin? It's because you don't feed your spirit man. You cannot be a friend of God and only talk to him when everybody is talking. You don't have a special moment with him. You don't have a time with him. And see, whoever you love, you make time for them. Amen. The first thing to do to become a, a friend of God, accept the gift of friendship with God. Let's say it together. I said the gift of friendship with what? With God. John 3.16 has given us the open chair. He loved us. He gave us Jesus to die for us. John 15.13 also talked about the love of Jesus for us. John 15.13. He says, Greater love has no more than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Greater love has no more than this. If you are asked between your life and someone else's life, can you give your life to your children? Can you give your life to your spouse? Or even if they deny your constant, some parents will have gotten downstairs inside their car, locked away before they remember they have children. Some people have landed in their houses before they remember where they my child. We cannot lay our life for another person, but Jesus came to lay down his life for us. There is no higher, higher level of love than that. And 1 John 4, 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. He already loved us from the foundation of the earth. So to become his friend, you have to accept the gift of friendship. If I'm meeting somebody for the first time, and I'm saying, I would like to be your friend, and the person gives me a slap, is that acceptance of friendship? No. Or if the person shows me, I want to shake you, you look my, at my hand like he's dirty. Feel the gems, you eat and you walk away. There is no way friendship can develop from there. Secondly, you have to be committed to knowing God. Committed to knowing God. And how can you know Him? Through His Word. Through His Word. You cannot say you want to be a friend of God and you don't know His Word. Through His Word, you can know His ways. Through His ways, you can know His heart. Through His heart, you can know His will for you. If you don't know the will of the Lord for you, you cannot be His friend. No matter how much you are talking about it and say, God, make me your friend. God, make me your friend. How much of God are you filled with? 
Become friends with God. Not just looking for what He's going to give you. Not just looking for miracles, signs, and wonders. Not just looking for open doors. Many of us, before we had our child, many of us, before we had our business, before we had a family, we were nearly dying in church. So we had to beg us to go home. Why don't you just go home and sleep today? We want to, no, I, I just love the house of the Lord. I want to sleep with the house of the Lord. I want to do everything for God. But when we got our miracle, they didn't see our daylight. Even when they see you, we say, I know, no, I don't have time for God. Or I'm serving God in my heart. But when you are looking for one miracle, you were not serving God in your heart. You were serving God in his house. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Like I said earlier, many Christians want to use God. It's not God that wants to use them. Let's open our Bible to Numbers chapter 12. From verse 6. Then he said, Hear now my word. And this is God speaking. When Moses was being disrespected, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. You see, faithfulness required to be a friend with God. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in that sense. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why there were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them and it departed. God said, I speak with Moses. I speak with him face to face. I speak with him plainly. I don't speak with him in parable. So it is very, very dangerous if you go against a man or a woman who is friend of with God. Who God calls his friend because God himself will fight against you. I pray none of us will be recipients of God's anger in Jesus' name. The third thing to become a friend of God. See God first. See God first. Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall be what? Shall be added unto you. But when you are seeking other things, then the things you need will not seek. When you seek God first, everything you need will be attracted to you. But when you don't seek God first, the things you are chasing after will be running away from you. So, speak, ensure you seek God if you want to become a friend with God. They please God above their desires. You decide to do the purpose of God. Jesus was saying in the Garden of Gethsemane, God, if it's possible, let this cup be taken away from me. But he says, not my will, but your will be done. So friends with God, people that want to become the friend of God, even though things are not going according to their will, they still seek the will of the Lord first. We see Enoch in Hebrews 11, 5, it says, Enoch was walked with God, and he was not. He had faith, and he walked with God. If you read through the book of Genesis, the Bible says he was 65 years old. He walked with God, and God took him. Ah, you are, you are my friend. I cannot allow you to be staying so far from me. We have to stay together. The fourth point, they live by faith. They live by what? They live by faith. Example again is Abraham. Abraham was a man of faith. Even when God told him, I'm changing your name from Abraham to Abraham. I'm changing your wife's name from Sarah to Sarah. They started calling each other father of many nations. And that promise came to pass eventually. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if you say you are somebody that wants to become a friend of God, you must be somebody that has faith. If we have verse 6, we can write it down. They believe God and his word. They are not dissuaded. They are not discouraged. Because they know that whenever he says a thing, it comes to pass. Let's read Romans 4 verse 19. Romans 4 19 says, And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. If you want to become 
a friend of God, this is what we must do. Be strengthened in faith. Amen. The fifth point for us to be a friend of God, we must live in holiness. The Bible says, for so peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall what? Shall see God. Hebrews 12 verse 14. Pursue peace with all men and holiness. You can't say you want to become a friend with God. You want to become a friend of God. And you are living a life of sin. You are living a life of immorality. What we see in Galatians 5, the fruit of the flesh is found in you. All forgiveness is found in you. Anger is found in you. Plutonic is found in you. There is no way you can live for God if you are living that kind of lifestyle. So we need to watch ourselves. If you truly want to become a friend with God, you have to live in holiness. Amen. Another way to become friends with God, pray without ceasing. We see that in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Pray without what? Ceasing. Pray always. Prayer is a means of communication with God. So if you say you want to become a friend with God, how often do you speak to God? You want to continuously speak to him always. We see an example of Abraham. He was communicating with God. He was interceding on behalf of the people. Moses also. So if you say you are, you are interested in becoming a friend with God, how often do you spend time with God? The time you spend with God is equal to your love for him. For us to know how much you love God, let us check the time you spend with God. Amen. So, we must pray without ceasing. We must have communication with God. Through communication, we know Him. We know what He wants us to do. Another way to, live, to become a friend with God. Friends of God live a sacrificial life. They live a what? A sacrificial life. We see example of Abraham. In Genesis 22, God told him, Abraham, take your son, the one whom you love,
Discipline. God will discipline you. John 15 verse 1 to 2. We can read that passage. He says, He proves us so that we can do what? Bear more fruit. So it will not just leave us, it will check us. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, it proves. I thought every branch that bears fruit is just going to pass it and say, come on, keep bearing fruit. The Bible says, it proves it. It cuts the edges. I say, I want you to bear more fruit. So when you are close to God, ex expect discipline. I remember when I was in school, there was a guy that said, if you are doing something wrong and God does not correct you, ah, God has left you. If you are doing something wrong and God allows you to go scot free and He does not expose you, you need to go back to God and say, Am I still part of your inner circle? Amen. So be ready to be pruned. James 1, verse 3 to 4, we can write it down. If we prune us all pride, if we prune us all anger, all, all forgiveness. And do you know how God prunes us? It's not just by cutting. If we put you in situations that we call forth for that your weakness. If we put you there in situations that we bring out your weakness so that you can deal with it. I remember when I was in a, in a um, hostel, while in undergraduate, my undergraduate years. There was a hostel I lived and I was like the oldest. But those younger students they were very rude. They will eat my food, use my plate, give it dirty. They will take my food stuff without asking. Ah, at the point I was always angry and angry and angry. And God was telling me, this is your training ground. I'm like, ah, training ground for what? How can you bring me here to a place where they disrespect me, they take my things? your training ground. Because you have to learn to deal with other people here. You have to learn to have long suffering. You have to learn to have forgiveness. So many of us, the situation we are passing through is a training ground for us. There is somebody beside you like a thorn. Every time you see the person, the person is making you angry. The person, the person is developing the weakness in you. If you are given to anger, God wants you to live that spirit of anger. If you are given to all forgiveness, God wants you to live that spirit of all forgiveness. If you are given to laziness in the place of prayer, God will pass through situations that you don't have a choice but to be prayerful. So whatever situation you are going through now, ask yourself. It will be your training ground. God can intentionally be taking you down to take all the trust from your life. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us so that we can depend on Him for strength in Jesus' name. The Bible says the strength of the Lord is made stronger in our weakness. So it means as your weakness is going to 20, God's strength is going to 80. So you should not be afraid to be weak before Him. Because in your weakness, you just don't come out being weak. You become strong with His own strength. Amen. It requires divine strength and determination to become friends with God. Divine strength and determination. And the final point, people that will become friends with God are grateful people. I would say they are praiseful. Praiseful and grateful people are those that will be friends with God. You can see that in 2 Samuel 6, when David was dancing. And very quickly, because of our time, I'm going to go through the benefits of becoming a friend of God. In case you are wondering, with all this I have to go through, why should I become a, a friend? God. The first thing is that you are private to God's secret. You will know the secret of God. We read already Moses. He said he shows his act to the good God of Israel. He showed his ways to Moses. Another one is Abraham. God said, how can I do this? I don't tell Abraham my friend. So you are able to know what God is going to do. You want to know what will happen tomorrow. You want to know what will happen in your family. Become a friend with God. He will reveal it to you. Amen. We can write down Psalm 25 verse 14. Psalm 25 verse 14. Peter, James, and John are part of the inner campus of Jesus. And when he was going to be transformed on the Mount 
of transfiguration. He did not take the old 12 disciples. He only took three people. Three of them. So if you want to be private to what God is going to do in this generation, you have to become a friend of God. The second thing they do, one another thing you benefit from becoming a friend of God, you can change God's mind through intercession and petition. You can change the mind of God through intercession and petition. We see Abraham. Abraham petitioned God, interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah, and he was able to change the mind of God. They would have destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot and his family, but he was able to save them because of intercession. So when you are friends with God, you are able to intercede for others. You are able to stand and change and steal the hand of God in his mercy. Amen. The third thing you receive when you become a friend with God, you receive unusual mystery and revelation from God. Unusual mystery and revelation. We see that in Revelation 1 of John the Lord. He got unusual mystery. He got unusual revelation. Revelation because of his word of friendship with God. He was in the inner inner circle with God. Another thing you get from your friendship with God, you can see God's glory. You are able to see the glory of the Lord. The Bible says when Moses went on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, by the time he came back, because he had seen the glory of the Lord, his face was shining so much that they could not look at his face. And he said, please wear a veil. So if you are asking him to wear a veil, how much more somebody that saw the glory directly? So you are able to see the glory of the Lord. Like Abraham, like Peter, James, and John. In that Matthew 17, verse 1 to 2. Another benefit is this one, like they'll say in my country, it sweet my belly. This one, I like it. God fights for them. Even without them saying, God fights for me. When you read through the book of um, Numbers 12, verse 10, God fought for Moses. The Bible says, when God left, Miriam was filled with what? Leprosy. When God fights for you, even when they took the wife of Abraham, Abraham as a friend of God, Abraham lied. But what happened? God says you are a dead man. If you don't return the wife of that man, God fights for his people. The other one is David in 2 Samuel chapter 6. When the wife disrespected him, what happened? God fought for him, still that woman. So instead of you looking for enemies and fighting them, become friends with God. God fights for them. Another thing for people that become friends with God is that they have courage. They don't have any fear. When you become friends with God, you have courage. You have no fear. We see David and Goliath. We see Abraham as well. When you went to fight to divide your brother. And finally, when you are a friend of God, everyone is certain for you. So if you don't have any reason to be a friend of God, if it is to make heaven, it is worth it. Everyone is starting for you. We see that in John 14, verse 1 to 3, it says, I'm going to make a place for you. So that where I am, you can be also. I will see him now. The Bible says, he walked with God, and it was not, for God took him. We see that in Genesis 5, 21 to 24. So if you want to be privy to God's secret, you want to be able to change God's mind, you want to receive unusual mystery and revelation from God, you want to see God's glory, you want to see him face to face, you want God to fight for you, you want to be courageous without any idea of fear, and you want to make heaven. It is very important for us to become friends with God. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let us pray and say, Father, grant me the grace to be your friend in the name of Jesus. Help me not to pay the price to be your friend in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to pay the price, no matter the cost, to be your friend in the name of Jesus. Father, help me, Lord, to be able to be your friend in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to be your friend in the name of Jesus. I just don't want to come and be your associate, Father. Help me to be your friend. Help me to have a closer relationship with you. Father, as I'm starting a new month, I receive the grace. I receive the enablement in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.